married to Kirk, um, who's seated back there with some of our kids. Three of them are here today. Um, we've been married for 13 and a half years. We have four children. Our eldest, Lily, is 11, Russell's 10, and Annie and Audrey are eight, year old, eight years old. I've lived most of my adult life in Brampton. Um, of course, I lived in Peterborough for a few years when I went to Bible College. And after graduating from Bible College, I moved to Ottawa, where my husband and boyfriend was. And we've been dating long distance for a year and a half. So I thought, well, maybe we should live in the same city and see if we actually get along um, more than long distance. Um, so for three years, oh, while in Ottawa, I completed my early childhood education diploma as well. We got, two, we got married two weeks after that. For three years, we lived in Ottawa. Something was drawing us back to Brampton. Homesickness was part of it, I suppose. So when Kirk finished his apprenticeship in the heating and air conditioning field, we moved back to my hometown. And we've now been there for just over 10 years. Kirk was actually able to transfer to a company in the Toronto area. So he went right from the farm to the city in one move. And he continued to apply to fire departments in the area, um, which was ultimately his dream job. So things were going well. We bought a home. We found a home church where my brother happened to be pastoring. Um, I even got a job working as a special needs teaching assistant. We had a 16-month-old girl, a new baby boy, and life was crazy, busy, but it was good. And we were very, very happy. I was happy to be home. Um, a year later, in 2002, we were excited to find out we were having twins. Well, I was excited. Kirk was dumbstruck, disbelieved, <laughs> shocked. Um, Lily was only three and a half, and Russell was just two years old when the twins arrived. For the first few months, we were very busy with our toddlers and newborns, of course. But we knew things would get easier, right? How could anything get more busy, more stressful, more chaotic? But in January of 2004, when Annie and Audrey were just over four months old, the unthinkable happened. Oh. <laughs> Annie had her first seizure. Looking back, I know there were signs of seizures even before this, but I didn't know what they looked like. I didn't know what I was looking for. I didn't know what was happening at the time. So after a CT scan and waiting at sick kids for a few days, we were ushered into a large hospital board room. Sitting across from the many doctors and nurses, we were given Annie's diagnosis, and I felt like I was in a she had something called tuberous sclerosis complex. We'd never heard of it, but I'm sure most of you have it. I remember the neurologist slid this piece of paper across the table with some information she printed off on the internet and was explaining some of the things that we could look, maybe look for and what could happen to Annie. I was a little relieved at the time to find out that this disorder had a broad spectrum where some people were very mildly affected and some people very severe. So there was hope that Annie would be normal, after all, and be at the mild end of the spectrum. We were shaken up, but we were hopeful. Most of what I heard in that meeting was a garble. But the one thing I remember hearing was that it was a genetic condition. I bit my lip very hard in an effort not to cry. You see, no one in that room knew that Annie was an identical twin. Nobody knew about Audrey, our other baby at home. And when I told them, the looks of shock on their, the doctor's faces told me that this was not good news. After Annie's diagnosis at SickKids, we were warned to keep our eye on Audrey, and we made the necessary calls to set up appointments and um, get some tests going for her as well. Three weeks later, Audrey began having seizures, and her diagnosis followed. Audrey, too, has tuberculosis complex. So here we were, 29 years old, married less than six years, Lily not even four years old, Russell just two, 
and our twin baby girls under six months old. Life was a whirlwind as it was, never mind dealing with seizures, mental delays, and possibly autism. Tuber sclerosis complex is a disorder which affects one's body to suppress tumor growth. The result is that benign tumors, or tubers, as they're called because they are tube-like in shape, they're very tiny. They grow on various organs throughout a person's body. Annie and Audrey have tubers all over their brains, too many to count. They also have the characteristic facial redness across the bridge of their nose and on their upper cheeks, as well as other skin marks, white patches, and different characteristic things of TS. One of the hardest things at the time was that nobody knew what this disorder was. It seemed like no one had heard of it, even other doctors outside sick kids. And I didn't want to know much either. I just wanted to take care of my babies the best I could, and I didn't want to know the worst case scenario. I was afraid. Immediately, though, Kirk and I learned about seizures, how to recognize them, how to time them, and what they look like. We charted everything. We began administering bitter tasting medication three to five times daily to each of our babies. We hired respite care workers and relied on my mom for help when the girls didn't sleep well. We asked God to help us and give us strength and asked our church families to pray, which they did. We were warned by the neurologist to watch for something called infantile spasms. She demonstrated to us what this might look like and told us we better call immediately if either of the babies began to have this very subtle but very dangerous type of seizure. Again, we prayed that they wouldn't have them. But at about nine months of age, Annie and Audrey began having infantile spasms. Initially, we were hopeful. We started them on a new drug, which was working wonders for many patients all over North America. But after two weeks, we were disappointed to find it wasn't working for our girls. It was urgent that we started on a steroid treatment right away. They were treated with ACTH steroids. We watched the BON nurses give them a needle in their leg every second day for five weeks. Our babies gained weight, became irritable, developed pimples, and had very low immune systems. That summer, we were pretty much house now. Audrey was hospitalized three times in those five weeks for various infections and had the worst seizure I've ever seen, which involved foaming at her mouth and lasting over half an hour. Both girls were generally miserable and couldn't even sit up at a year old. Very, very chubby. Thankfully, the treatment was a huge success and the infantile spasms were stopped as fast as they could. Sadly, though, children with TS who have infantile spasms generally are more mentally delayed and are more severely <coughs> affected. So although they were 18 months old, Annie and Audrey chewed on toys and banged things on their mouths obsessively. They also started suffering from sleep disorder. We were so happy when they began to stand up and walk between 19 and 21 months old, which is really not that far behind typical children. Annie and Audrey didn't really babble until they were well over two years old. Neither of them would eat solid or baby foods and relied on Pediasure for their nutrition for many, many months. It seemed like there was just one thing after another. When the girls were two and a half, Kirk and I finally decided it was time to get educated about this disease. We attended conferences on tuber sclerosis and epilepsy. We connected with other families like ours and with the knowledge and just being surrounded um, by people who truly understood, was, it was very empowering and very encouraging for us, um, even if it was just for a few days at a time. But our girls were still not sleeping well and we were wearing out. And it's very important for people, and if you don't know much about epilepsy, it's very important they have a good sleep so as to not have more seizures. I felt so unequipped to do what God had given us to do. I felt like maybe this was more than I could handle. After a long year or more of dealing with Annie and Audrey's sleeplessness, I desperately asked the neurologist for help. <coughs> His response, although he's a wonderful man, was not very encouraging. He told me, most 
most people with a neurological dysfunction or disorder have sleep disorder. And he was blunt, and he gave me no reassurance that it would go away. This was not the answer I was looking for, and I was confused. Just to give you an idea, Annie and Audrey were two years old, two and a half, and they wouldn't go to bed till about midnight, and then wake up three or four hours later and just be raring to go. And trust me, this is not just a case of children pulling our chain or being bad. It was something physiological that they couldn't control. 